Face to face until that was the time that I knew what I was being accused of. And they said what? They uh, said that I have viewed some documents in the FBI ACS system without authorization. The FBI computer system? Correct. What documents did they say that you had looked at? Uh, they insinuated that it was documents relating to Hezbollah investigations. She says the prosecutors told her that the evidence against her was secret and that she couldn't see the documents in question, but they implied that she had passed classified information. Look, the, the suggestion here, I mean, reading right. between the lines here, is that you looked for Shahane's name and your sister's name to see if the FBI was investigating. That's absolutely false and absurd. You didn't do that? Absolutely not. And in fact, the investigation into whether she'd passed classified information turned up nothing. But prosecutors Eric Strauss and Kenneth Chadwell kept digging, and they stumbled on something that all those background investigations had missed or dismissed. It turned out that 18 years earlier, when she first came to the United States, Prouty had taken a fateful shortcut to citizenship. You arranged a sham marriage. That is correct. You understood at the time. I understood that, that it was, against was wrong. The law. Yes, correct. I understood that that was wrong. In 1989, at age 19, Nada Prouty, her sister and a girlfriend, arranged bogus marriages to get their green cards and avoid going back to Lebanon, which was still at war. Eighteen years later, in 2007, prosecutors rounded them all up and charged them with conspiracy to defraud the United States. Under pressure, Prouty agreed to waive the 10-year statute of limitations on immigration fraud and plead guilty to two felonies related to the sham marriage. She also agreed to plead guilty to one misdemeanor count of unauthorized use of an FBI computer, a charge she now denies. I've made that mistake when I was a 19-year-old teenager, and I, I shouldn't have made it, and I own up to it, but I did not look into FBI uh, ACS system without, without authorization. I did not mismanage or mishandle any classified information. You pled guilty to that? That is correct. Why would you do that if it wasn't true? I had to make a decision. I could not see our limited financial resources disappear in front of our own eyes. From attorney's fees? From attorney's fees that amounted in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. But pleading guilty wouldn't be the end of it. Prosecutors didn't have the evidence to make a terrorism case in court, so they made one in the media. In a November 2007 press release, the prosecutors said, it's hard to imagine a greater threat than someone like Nada Prouty. They said she had exploited her access to sensitive counterterrorism intelligence. And later, the Detroit office boasted that it had uncovered the only known case of an illegal alien infiltrating U.S. intelligence agencies with potential espionage implications, as if Nada Prouty had plotted from the age of 19 to infiltrate the CIA. All the worse, there it was, a word never uttered in court, espionage. Nada Prouty was branded a traitor in the national news media. A young woman who worked for the FBI and the CIA... His brother-in-law is linked to a terror group. ...and the FBI suspects she may have given that information to terrorists. My family was destroyed. Neighbors wouldn't talk to us. When my daughter would go out in the neighborhood, her friends would scatter away. They told her, we don't want to talk to you because your mommy is bad. One of the New York papers called you Jihad Jane. That, that's the Jane that went to Iraq and put her life on the line. Before she was sentenced, the CIA launched its own investigation to find out if Nada Prouty was a Hezbollah spy. Bob Grenier, the CIA's former head of counterterrorism, told us what they found. There was a full investigation which included uh, multiple polygraph examinations. What was the conclusion in Nada Prouty's case? She was completely exonerated. The CIA wrote this letter to the prosecutors saying, the agency did not identify any information that Mrs. Prouty cooperated or engaged in unauthorized contact with a foreign intelligence service or terrorist organization. How seriously do they take those investigations? How thorough are they? Oh my God, it, it, you cannot imagine how seriously 
the CIA would take an investigation like that. At sentencing, federal judge Avern Cohn blasted the U.S. Attorney's Office. Perhaps prompted by the excessiveness of the press releases, he said, the news media grossly distorted the circumstances of your case. As a citizen, the judge told Prouty, you served your country honorably and effectively. But because of the law, the judge was forced to revoke her citizenship. Instead of throwing her in prison, he fined her $975. The prosecutors received an award for their three-year Hezbollah investigation. But for all the press they were seeking then, they declined to talk to us for this story. But the Justice Department did send us a statement saying that it makes no apologies for the prosecution of Nada Prouty. She has no one to blame but herself. The statement says the actions taken by the government to address her crimes were measured, appropriate, and consistent with obligations to uphold the law without fear or favor. You know there are people watching this who say she was a CIA agent. She's trained to lie. The prosecutors in Detroit certainly thought you were lying. What do you say to that? I have the truth on my side. I've already been exonerated by the CIA. I've already been exonerated by a federal judge. And I say to the people, look at the evidence and make up your mind. Nada Prouty was to be deported to Lebanon, but because she would likely be killed by the very terrorists she investigated, the judge blocked her deportation. And up. Today, she lives in Virginia with an American husband she married in 2001 and their two children. I wonder whether losing your citizenship was the worst part of all of this. That was the most painful part. How do you feel about that? I, I've carried a weapon in defense of my country. And I've put my life on the line for the country. I've put the life of of my unborn child for the country. And I've been in a horrible situation, have been shot at. And what the country gives me back is denationalization. They take away from me the most precious thing, the, the thing that I believe in the most. I feel like I've been stabbed in the heart.